In the outline of the previous lecture, I already gave you three questions to address in order to understand the basics of arrays. I have already discussed this first question that how to declare and define one dimensional array. In this lecture, we will consider this question that is how to access the array elements. So let's get started. Accessing elements from 1D array. To access an array element, just write array name followed by square brackets and inside these square brackets, you have to specify the index. Suppose you have an array of length equals to 5. Then as we know, index starts from 0, the last index of this array will be 4. Because if length is equals to 5, then last index of the array must be 4. It's always length minus 1. So index starts from 0 and goes up to 4. If you want to access the first element of an array, you can access that element by specifying the index as 0. Here you have to write the name of the array, then you have to write the square brackets, and then you have to specify the index. Now, if you want to access the second element of an array, you have to specify the index as 1. And if you want to access the third element of the array, then you have to specify the index 2. And so on. One thing you should always remember is that index always starts from 0 and goes up to length minus 1. The length that I am talking about is the length of the array. This is all about accessing the array elements. Now we have understood clearly that how we can access the array elements. Now the third question that we have to address is how to initialize one dimensional array. We will discuss this question in the upcoming lecture. Okay. If you remember in the previous lecture, I already gave you a tip. Specifying the length of an array using macro is considered to be an excellent practice, right? If you specify the length of an array using macro, then it is always considered to be the best practice. This is the way you define a macro, right? You definitely asked me this question that why, why it is considered to be the best practice? We will see why right now. In this program, as you can see, I am not specifying the macro. I basically want to differentiate between the programs in which I am going to use macro and the programs in which I am not going to use macro. Inside this main function, I have declared an array and the length of this array is 10. I want to run this for loop from 0 to 9 so that I can input total 10 elements from the user inside this array. After this for loop, there is one more for loop where I just want to print all the 10 elements of the array. This program is without macro. Suppose in future, I want to ask user to enter 15 elements in this array. It is not possible to enter 15 elements in this array because the length of this array is 10. I can change this to 15 in order to allow 15 elements to be entered inside this array. Not only that, I have to make change over here as well. And I have to make change over here as well, right? This way, I can allow 15 elements to be entered inside this array, right? If your code is large, then making those changes everywhere will be cumbersome. In order to eliminate this disadvantage, we can use macros. Let's see how macros can be useful in order to eliminate this disadvantage. Here is the program with macro. This is how I am defining a macro. And instead of writing the length directly, I have specified the name of the macro, right? Which is n. I have also specified n over here and n over here. Now suppose in future, I want my user to enter 15 elements in this array. The length of this array must be at least 15. Therefore, I just have to make a small change over here. I am going to change this to 15. Just making a change over here will automatically make changes over here, right? There is no need to update the length over here, over here and over here. You just have to make change over here and automatically the change will happen everywhere where you are using the macro, right? That is why macro is considered to be the best practice 
whenever you are specifying the length of an array. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation.